everybody, welcome back to another Whiteboard Wednesday. Jake and Matt here once again, here on the Blue Lock team. And uh, last time we talked a little bit about the differences between the physical world and the virtual world and the cloud computing world. And I think it would be interesting this time if we talk a little bit about how to make that move. So if, say, a business has already made the decision to move from physical to virtual or physical to the cloud, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that they need to take care of, you know, starting off and then to implement everything seamlessly, you know, what kinds of things are they looking at going through as a, you know, as a process? Okay. So, I guess to start off, something that might be interesting to you guys out there is, you know, how much time is this going to take? You know, I've got these physical machines, I want to get them into the cloud, how long is that going to take? Well, you always want to plan very carefully around something like this. So, you want to make sure you do the proper testing, um, you know, with the platforms that are available in the cloud, uh, before you migrate your production, you know, platform over there. Right. So, um, I would I would say you know the the first decision that needs to be made is do we want to migrate our servers to the cloud or do we want to migrate our data to the cloud? Okay. So and that's and that's a big decision to be made. So with with the the cloud providers that are out there now, they have platforms in pl place that are probably very similar to what you have now. There might be some version um, differences there, but for the most part, you can probably find something that's very similar already. Okay. And that might be just a data migration. All right. Uh, with the server migration, we're actually converting everything that you have and moving it into the cloud. Okay. So, real quickly, uh, explain the difference between data migration and server migration in terms of benefits. Why would someone want to do data rather than server, why would someone want to do server rather than data? Okay, so data migration, you might want, you might not want to keep your existing uh, operating system. There might be, it might be all messed up and slow and you might not want to keep that. Okay. Um, so moving to a new platform and just migrating the data might be the better solution. However, if there are a lot of custom variables that you have set up in your operating system, you might want to move the servers. So depending on what that customization is and you know, depending on how, how comfortable you feel um, you know, with, with the operating system set up and how, how the server's performing before you move it, that might make the biggest decision right there. Okay, so once you've decided which way to go, data or server migration, what are you going to look for after that? I assume you need to have an understanding of kind of the resources that you had and you were utilizing in the physical world so you could allocate them in the virtual or cloud computing world. Right. Um, how, could you talk a little bit more about that and, and what you would maybe do and why you'd want to do that? So right. with the data migration, it's easy or as difficult as you want to make it um, with selecting a cloud provider. Mm -hmm. So you select a cloud provider with a similar platform to what you have uh -huh. and you can go through price comparisons and all that and decide to move the data there. Cool. Pretty simple. So moving your, your you know, if you're hosting web pages, moving your web pages, your SQL databases, all that over, it's just data, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to worry about, you know, the versioning with the platform and stuff like that. So there might be a little bit more work there. With the server migration, um, it's, it's a little more difficult as far as the choice goes. Um, depending on how you convert, if it's a physical machine, how you convert that and what type of virtual machine you convert it to. There are some open formats out there, but you still have the, um, the challenge of finding a cloud provider that would support you uploading a virtual machine and keeping that private. So there's, you know, if you, if you convert your current server that you have at your data center to a VM, you, want, you don't want anybody else keeping that. So you wanna, you wanna keep it on the enterprise platform. You don't want to go with the public cloud and up, upload private data that way. Okay. So, so once you've decided what kind of migration you're going to do and you understand the resources you're going to be needing, what's next? Is it, is it just pretty much migrate? Yeah. So when, when we migrate uh, the server, for instance, you're uploading or sending your virtual machine on, on a piece of hardware to the cloud provider and they are actually putting that in the cloud. So there's a lot of planning, you know, when we're when we're making the the server migration. There's a lot of planning 
that you'll go through with the cloud provider around well, you know how, how much resources you're you're needing or, or wanting yeah. and you know how you want to scale beyond that okay well great so it sounds like it's a you know we can chunk this down into three pretty big steps Th this migrate piece how long does that take altogether I mean this piece in and of itself really isn't that time intensive right it's, no. it's the planning and preparation absolutely that uh, can save you lots of headaches in the future right if if you implement wrong uh, and don't get this stuff right in the first place. Right. Okay. Do it right the first time is kind of my yeah credo. <laughs> sure, sure, that makes sense. All right, great. Well, we've got this three-step process here. Hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, maybe you could leave some comments and uh, let us know what you'd like to hear about next time. And for now, happy Whiteboard Wednesday.